Okay, everybody, it is time for us to talk about everybody's absolute favorite topic, new metal. The one thing that nobody will ever, 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 ever get sick of hearing about on my channel is new metal. And so me, a man of the people, you know, they say the customer is always right. You are the customer. And I, I'm just a simple man working in the depths of the content factory. I'm here to give you what you want. And here I am shoveling one load after another of new metal content for you. Uh, sweating it out in the content mines. And I'm back today with more new metal content. This time, we're here to take a deep dive into the world of new metal TikTok. So we'll see what cringe awaits us in the depths of new metal TikTok. And also, I'm excited to have Tiege Hanley as the sponsor of today's video. They help men start and maintain a skincare routine by simplifying the entire process. Honestly, it's the best skincare system for guys like you and me. I recommend that you start with their level one system, which comes with all the basics. A daily face wash to get rid of all the dirt and grime on your skin. A two times per week exfoliating scrub to get rid of all those dead skin cells. An AM moisturizer with SPF 20 because you should always be protecting your skin against the sun. And a PM moisturizer to help your skin stay hydrated and healthy throughout the night. My favorite part about Tiege Hanley is that every box comes with an instruction card that tells you when to use each product, how much to use, and in what order. Their products have made my skin look and feel better than ever, but you don't have to just take my word for it. They have over 7,000 five-star reviews on their website from satisfied customers all over the world. And because Tiege Hanley is sponsoring today's video, they are offering my viewers a great deal. Just click the first link in the description and you'll get 30% off your first box plus a free gift. So don't miss out on this amazing deal. Click that link and get started today. This one here about the elements of new metal featuring Linkin Park. Let's see what he has to say. I know that Linkin Park is not strictly a new metal band. Okay. They are the band that use the four new metal elements the most effectively. Uh, two things here. One, I like that he put the, the dots, the umlauts or whatever, over the U in new metal. That's how they originally spelled it back in the day. It's a nice touch of authenticity. My question is, what are the new metal elements? I guess, you know, like they used to say like the, the four elements of hip hop, like DJing, graffiti, breakdancing, and rapping or whatever. What are the elements of new metal? We'll see. The four new metal elements are heavy guitars, mm. angst, turntables, a hip hop guy. Hip hop guy, okay. Very important, you gotta have the hip hop guy, it's true. You can't overuse any one element or else you start to get annoying. Yep. Like too much angst, you're stained. Too uh -huh. much turntables, you're incubus. Too much hip hop guy, you're limb biscuit. Linkin Park balanced all the elements, got the formula mm. exactly right and rightfully blew up. Okay, I'll agree with that. There are a couple new metal elements that I feel like he left out, though. Uh, number one, spiky hair. Number two, eyebrow piercings. Number three, wacky facial hair of some kind. Number four, a bass player that's like hunched over the, like they're a fentanyl addict passed out at a bus stop. I would add those as four additional elements of new metal, but I think his point stands. I like it. Nice job, Jesse. Nice job. This is uh, new metal fans in the 90s, and uh, it's hard to tell these days. Are we looking at actual fans from the 90s, or are we looking at new metal cultural appropriators of the 2020s, Gen Z kids? culturally appropriating my culture and let me tell you kids my culture is not your costume all right i don't appreciate you trivializing it let's see to say i stink i'm proud to say i smell i'm proud to say i don't take showers i'm proud to say i don't own a bar so i'm proud to say they do look smelly I'm, proud to say I I'm glad that this person made this because you know if you were around back then you will know you know new metal is cool now but there is nothing less cool than new metal in the 90s or the early 2000s. Like people looked at new metal fans back then the way that we would look at like juggalos now or, or maybe even worse because I feel like juggalos now are sort of respected. Like people kind of like juggalos or at least, you know, sort of look at them endearingly. Maybe like furries. That might be the better way to think about it. New metal kids were like on the same level as we would look at furries now. Keep that in mind, people. Um, anytime somebody tries to tell you that new metal was cool back then, that's cap, people, it's cap. Next time someone tries to tell you that, 
print this video out. Print out every frame of this video. Print it out on your mom's inkjet and say, Finn McKenty said this is cap. That's what I want you to do. This is an interesting one. New metal artists who hated being called new metal from uh, Jesse Lee, who makes great content, by the way. Artists who hated being called new metal, part four. Yeah, Deftones might be one of the, the most confusing ones. bands to be lumped into the new metal scene, and vocalist Chino Marino didn't understand it either. He felt Deftones always did their own thing, and he didn't want to be labeled new metal because anything called new will one day be old. <laughs> we don't want to be called new metal. Even though we look like new metal and we play seven string guitars with Dickie's shorts and the guitars are down around our knees and we're friends with Korn. Everyone who listens to our band also listens to new metal. But other than that, I don't know why anybody would call us new metal. This is like, I mean, I get it. I get it. You know, of course, may maybe they don't quite fit in with the rest of the bands. But to me, it's kind of silly. I feel like every artist hates their genre right like you know we're not really a pop punk band we think of ourselves as more just a rock band with midwest emo touches and maybe elements of progressive math rock okay but you sound like blink 182 well yeah but we're totally not pop punk or the thrash bands like we're not really thrash we're more like aggressive speed metal has there ever been a band in the history of music that just accepted their label, you know, they're like, so you guys are a new metal band. I'm like, yeah, you guys are indie rock. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't know why people like, why do people have such a hard time being labeled? I don't know. Gino went as far as turning down the Family Values Tour with Korn and Limp Bizkit in an attempt to distance themselves from the genre. In 2020, Chino called most of new metal stupid, but said people shouldn't be embarrassed for liking it because a lot of it is stupidly good and catchy. <laughs> so he sounds like me. This shit is terrible. But you shouldn't be afraid of liking it. If you like it, that's okay. If you like stupid, bad things, that probably means you're a stupid, bad person. But that's okay. There's nothing wrong with being a stupid, bad person. <laughs> I like his style. I feel like now I'm uh, I'm converted. I'm a, I'm a Deftones fan after knowing that. Oh, I like this a lot. Here's what I've been saying. As you guys may know, I am a certified metal elitist, okay? You guys may not know that, but it's true. I am. I'm a certified metal elitist. And uh, one of the things that I've been so disappointed about uh, with the new metal revival is I feel like everybody only listens to like the same four new metal bands. You know, it's like Korn, Limp Bizkit, Slipknot, and Lincoln Park. And it's like, these are the only four bands that anybody knows when it comes to new metal. Maybe, you know, maybe we can throw Evanescence, you know, in there. And if you consider Deftones new metal, whatever. But point being, I want to see these kids go further down the iceberg. Exactly. Why can't we have a dry kill logic revival? That, exactly. So I'm excited to see that that's actually starting to happen. This girl is an example. You know, when someone says Limp Biscuit is my favorite new metal band, here's what she has to say. I'm not judging you, but I'm just saying every everybody else is gonna. <laughs> you know, and I'm not judging you, but I'm just saying every everybody else is gonna. I'm judging. I'm judging. Uh, if you like Limp Biscuit, that's okay, but I'm just saying you got to go deeper down the iceberg. If you want to be a real new metaler. Then you got to go deeper down the iceberg. For example, this kid here, New Metal Kid. I don't know who New Metal Kid is, but it's happening, people. It's happening. Just watch. New Metal bands to get into other than Corn, Limp Biscuit, and Deftones. Il Nino, Edema, Taproot, Skindred, Nonpoint, Dry Kill Logic. There it is. Flaw, Nothing Face, Dark New Day, Head P.E. Listen, people, you know that the new metal revival has hit a whole new level when people on TikTok are talking about Head P.E. and Dry Kill Logic and Flaw. Now I'm finally on board with this. When it was just a bunch of like posers listening to Deftones, I was like, get the fuck out of here, kids. You don't know anything about new metal. You are a false new metaler. But now, now they're talking about Head P.E.? I can respect that. I can get on board with that. Snot, mud vein, dope. Stereo, stereo mud. That's a rare one. That's uh, one of the guys from Life of Agony's band. Actually, pretty good. Cold, Primer 55, Spine Shank. They're getting it, right? I'm impressed. The kids are all right with me. When the kids on TikTok are talking about head PE and dry kill logic, that's when you see me with my arms folded in the back of the room, nodding in approval. I'm like, 
Respect. Respect, sister. Respect. It gives me hope for the youths. Gives me hope. Also, I like that they're starting to understand the nuances of new metal fashion because as you know, the most important part of any kind of music is the fashion. This person here, correcting everybody or clarifying for everyone, please understand that I wear Adidas in a Jonathan Davis slash new metal way. <laughs> Some important yeah, details here. Number one, there are many ways of uh, wearing Adidas. And so I think it's very smart and important that she clarified because you could wear them in a Beastie Boys kind of way, which would be like the Gen X dad way. You could wear them in like a Deftones kind of way, which is similar to the Jonathan Davis way, but not exactly the same. You could wear them in sort of a Kylie Jenner, like normie kind of girl sort of way. So it's important. People need to know this stuff in a skater way. Exactly. There's a lot of different ways that you could be wearing Adidas. And so I think uh, it's valuable information that she clarified. Also, the flared jeans. This was like in between boot cut jeans and skinny jeans. It's just this sort of awkward, like flared phase with the cutoff bottoms that you like step on and they get all muddy respect the kids are the kids are good they know the nuances and i approve when i see one of those 13 year old metalheads that never went through a cringy new metal phase l excuses right hand on the bible god can strike me down if i'm lying that motherfucker's cheating he's cheating Excuse if you didn't have a cringy new metal phase you're cheating i'll tell you what's a lot more cringe than having a new metal phase is being under 40 and having a battle vest, he's got like acid bath, Sodom. I think that's a Bathory shirt that he's wearing. Creator. And uh, I think that's like the old school Sepultura logo. I can't tell. Listen, I'm 44 years old and I am a little bit too young to have been into like Sodom and Creator. Okay, those, those bands came out in like the 80s. It's bad enough to have a cringy new metal phase. It's way cringier to be like, this kid looks like he's like 15. Way more cringe to be 15 years old and listen to your literal fucking grandfather's metal bands, okay? Like, people who are into this shit are like 55, okay? <laughs> like, it'd be more respectable to listen to Jimmy Buffett than fucking Acid Bath and Sodom. I mean, Sodom's a cool band, but if you're 55... Don't be the born in the wrong generation kid. Okay, like I said, the details are important when it comes to accessorizing, when it comes to style, the details are important. And this girl, Chris Crypt, she's breaking it down for us. So new metal style versus mall goth. Important stuff here. Back in the late 90s, the new metal style and mall goth were seen as the exact same thing. Nowadays, we like to think of them as two different aesthetics. Mm -hmm. See, I like this. She's breaking it down for us. The differences between new metal and mall goth, and she's right. Back in the 90s, those were essentially thought of as the same thing. But, apparently, it's two different things to the kids now. Let's see what she has to say. So let me tell you the differences between okay. them. The new metal style mainly consisted of big jeans, big t-shirts, and band tees. Yeah, well, she's missing a few important details here. The fishnet arm sleeves, I don't even know what you call those. Very important. The candy bracelets, also very important. So this is sort of the, I would call this like the raver side of like new metal fashion right because you know there's there's different versions there's also like the skater version of new metal and there's like the just like tweaker meth addict that lives in a trailer at the end of a fucking long driveway in the woods kind of look i feel like she's missing a few nuances here but let's go on we can see it styled here by the band kitty you see uh -huh. the gothy elements with the jewelry and the hair but the actual yep. outfit is literally just jeans and a tank top Okay, fair, okay, jeans, okay, all right, fair enough, okay. I like to call new metal style diet mall goth because they didn't really mm. go into the goth subculture as much, but they kind of had elements of it. Yeah. You see, mall goth was a lot darker and it consisted of way more gothy attire. True, like velvet. When I think of mall goths, especially the 90s, velvet is an important ingredient. And I'll tell you what, never trust a girl who wears velvet. Huge, huge red flag because the type of girl that wears velvet is uh, very likely to have one of those like gross trashy pets such as a parrot a bird rather of some kind or a ferret or a snake or maybe rabbits any of those four kind of pets 
That's like a giant red flag or a pet rat. Yes, a sugar glider, any tarantula. Yeah, any of these sort of weird, edgy, yet dorky kind of pets, anything other than like a cat or a dog, basically, that's a red flag. And uh, girls that wear velvet go hand in hand with those kind of weird pets. You know, that's just a one way trip to pain. So trust me, people, save yourself the pain. And if you see velvet, just run. I love using this picture as an example because you can mm. see that Mercedes is dressed in a way more new metal style with the big shorts and the Adidas superstars. Yep. Whereas Talina is wearing a similar outfit, but in a more mm. mall goth. I respect this. Like, in all seriousness, anybody that overanalyzes, like, cringy youth subcultures from 20 years ago, that overanalyzes them like I do, that overanalyzes the footwear of the late 90s, I respect it. This girl is dedicated to her craft, and I'm on board. Way, and you can see the differences really well in this picture. So if you love new metal and you don't want to go full goth like this, mm. the new metal style is a great option for you. I agree. Nicely done, Chris. Great content. 10 out of 10. I mean that. I really do. Here's a good one. Explaining a little bit more of the details. You guys know I've said many, many, many times before. I've tried to tell you guys all about the importance of accessorizing. Here's a TikTok to back me up on this. Proof that 90% of mall goth is accessorizing. And let's see how this comes together. So you can see here she's got some corn tank top on with some, you know, kick pants or something and some flame toed Doc Martens. All right, yeah, I see where we're going. See where we're going with this, but something seems missing, right? <laughs> Ooh, okay. Now we've added, number one, the uh, fishnet arm sleeves. Number two, a second set of arm sleeves. I don't know what you call those. Some uh, barrettes in her hair, a belt, maybe two belts. And uh, she instantly, her, her Malgoth chakra instantly went up by at least a thousand points. I see a spiked collar as well as some sort of like a chunky metal necklace there. Well done. I feel like I saw her at a Cold Chamber show in 1998. Respect. If you guys ever doubted me about the importance of uh, accessories, now you know. Here is some more evidence, powerful evidence, of the importance of accessorizing. This is the New Metal Starter Pack Part 2. Let's see. Well, already I can see that he's got some of the most important elements. Number one spiky hair number two eyebrow piercing number three zany facial hair some sort of goatee let's see where he takes it from here spiky hair or starter dreadlocks okay valid valid i'll take it oh bulky shoes or puma so this is uh this is the legendary osiris d3 right pumas <sighs> listen Okay, here's the thing about Pumas. I'll use soft drinks as an analogy, okay? Um, Nike is Coca-Cola, right? The leading brand because it is the best. Adidas is Pepsi. Still pretty decent. You know, maybe it's not your first choice, but it's fine. But once we're getting down to like Puma and Reebok, that's when we're starting to get into like Dr. Pepper territory or like RC Cola, the kind of stuff where you're just like, ugh, I might rather just go thirsty than drink RC Cola or wear Pumas. Fila, exactly. But it is true, Puma and Fila or Pony, very important parts of new metal style. So I'm with him on this one. Oval glasses, there it is. Dennis Rodman, new metal icon, Dennis Rodman. Black Fly is the brand, uh, the definitive brand here. Black Fly and Oakley. I don't even know if they still make Black Flies anymore. So you can take that oh, yeah. Flames and tribal tattoos. Absolutely. Important. There we go. Be this guy, basically. What have, I, what have I been trying to tell you, people? What have I been trying to tell you? Shifty Shell Shock is goals, people. Everything you could ever wish for in one human... You're looking at him in this picture. And again, how much would you pay to be Shifty Shellshock's fingers for just one night? Hmm? That's what I want to know. How much would you pay just to smell his fingers? Just like a sommelier, just sniffing his finger. How much would you pay? Priceless. That's what I think.
priceless. This is an important point. So me, when I'm trying to defend new metal and say there are some actual good bands in the scene, and then this song comes on and my entire argument is destroyed. Doing all you can to look like Raggedy Ann. Check you out, punk. Now, I don't know if he didn't include the lyrics to this song because it would get banned on TikTok, but this song is All in the Family by Korn. Let's see some of the lyrics. Um, pretty rough stuff. Um, I hear you tweeting on them Epsler pipes, Claude. You just can't get away. Get a gay. Get it because he's insinuating that Jonathan Davis is a homosexual. And being a homosexual in the 90s, in the 90s new metal scene, not so cool. So it's kind of interesting how much uh, they've... They've tried to retcon new metal as being like inclusive or something like that. Could not possibly be less inclusive. Like new metal back then was seen as the domain of like rapey frat bros. Like it was not inclusive in the slightest, in the slightest. Okay. Now I'm not trying to cancel Fred Durst over some lyrics from 1998, but I am saying that uh, let's not pretend that new metal was anything other than what it was. Okay. Not exactly the most inclusive genre. For all of you who are ready to start your own new metal revival band, uh, got some good tips here from uh, your man, Nick Nocturnal. How to new metal in 30 seconds. He'll teach you how. Let's see. Although he's playing an Ernie Ball Music Man, which is not a very new metal guitar, but we'll allow it. I feel like it's got to be an Ibanez or a PRS for maximum new metal, but we'll allow it for now. How to new metal in 30 seconds. Drop C sharp. Okay. Power mm. chords. Tasty. There and it is. The one. Corny leads. Mm -hmm. Spoopy. Turntables the waka waka wow waka waka wow. Primal noises. I feel like somebody needs to sell like a uh, turntable sample pack to take advantage of the new metal revival so everyone can drop turn. How long is it going to be before every shitty new metal band, or sorry, shitty new metal core? band starts dropping fucking turntable samples into their songs, right? I feel like it's only a matter of time. Go. Okay, so those are the ingredients. Let's see how it comes together. Okay. <laughs> Pretty authentic. I feel like if you combine Nick's tips for writing your music with all the other tips we got on the aesthetics. I feel like you've got all the raw ingredients. I feel like you're good to go. Oh, this was a good one. I feel like this girl, Chris Crypt, is the world's leading new metal creator. And after we watch this, you will see why. As I've said before, so that's cool. Oh, you like corn, you like Deftones, you like Slipknot, that's cool. But give me a call when you're ready to um when you're ready to bring back saliva okay well this girl is ready to do just that uh, as she says new metal isn't a music genre it's a lifestyle and uh you can see here she's not lying she is dedicated She's not lying. She's ready to bring it back. She's got everything. She's got her CRT in the background here playing uh, Batman, the animated series. She's got uh, her Jankos with the like candy colored spaghetti strap tank top. I have a few like complaints. I see uh, My Chemical Romance here on the cover of this issue of Kerrang. I'm going to need you to get rid of that. If you want to really be dedicated, I'm going to need you to have a poster of uh, Flaw or edema. She's got Joy Division there. Joy Division, definitely not new metal, so I'm going to need you to get rid of that. But other than that, I feel like she's doing really well. Saliva is kind of butt rock, but um, Saliva is really like right on the edges of butt rock and new metal, right? Kind of right in the middle. When did this song come out? Click, click, boom. Came out in 2001. That's what I thought. Now you'll notice a lot of these Zoomers, you know, they get the they get the timelines a little bit wrong. Like this song didn't exist in 1999, but that's okay. It's okay. I'm willing to overlook it. For now, it's official. In my book, Chris Crypt has the title of uh, World's Best New Metal Creator. Very impressed. She has my seal of approval. Last but not least, again, to my point earlier about let's just acknowledge New Metal for what it was. You guys think that I'm the only system of a down disliker. You guys think that I'm the only person that might have said, you know what, maybe System of a Down isn't as great 
as you thought. You know, everyone tries to tell me how intellectual they are. And well, actually, Serge's lyrics are, you know, really poignant. And uh, he has a lot of like great political insights and stuff. I'm like, hmm, are you sure about that? Well, this girl makes a valid point here. Let's check it out. I like to watch retarded people have sex. Me, System of a Down is one of my favorite bands ever. System of a Down. And here's what they have to say. I like to watch retarded people have sex. Am I alone? The look on her face says everything. <laughs> says everything. Hey, listen. If you like System of a Down, go for it. Listen to it all you want. I'm just saying. Can we just stop pretending that System of Down was anything other than just another new metal band? Can, can we? It is what it is. Okay. Well, I have good news for you, people. The kids on TikTok, they never disappoint. And I'm happy to say my criticisms of the new metal revival have been addressed. Before I said, you know, really, I'm not impressed. The fact that you listen to Limp Bizkit, Slipknot, Korn, and Linkin Park, that's cool. But call me back when you're ready to go further down the iceberg. And I'm proud to say that the kids are going down the iceberg. So it is only a matter of time before Head P.E. is the next hot band on TikTok. I'm telling you people, it's going to happen. It's only a matter of time. So that does it for this edition of New Metal TikTok Cringe. Join us again for the next edition and we'll see how far down the iceberg they have gone. If you guys ever doubted me about the importance of uh, accessories, now you know.